Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I am your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guests are Garrett McIntyre and Sean Cullen. And these two guys have created an amazing team very quickly. Uh, you know, one of them, uh, Garrett, he's a professional athlete. Uh, he was. Now he's a first responder. I mean, he's out there as a firefighter and, and serving others in a big way. But he came from that professional athlete background. I just think there's a lot of things, uh, you know, just the mindset uh, that you have to have to become a pre professional athlete. It says something about you. Uh, but also where Sean has been in the military, I think I think it was 17 years or uh, roughly, uh, uh, or he's he's been, no, over 20 years in leadership and management. Uh, he's a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force. Uh, and so the mindset behind that as well, the training that he has received, uh, it's, it was great to hear their story, how they have partnered, how they've used their unique abilities and skill sets that they've learned over many years uh, before getting into real estate to now quickly build an amazing team. I mean, they just met like a year ago, I think, or partnered over just over a year ago before the, the uh, pandemic. And now they have, you know, another underwriter on their team. They have a CPA on their team. They have somebody that's just in charge of operations and another person that's IT and tech uh, focused. And so it's, it's just amazing just to hear uh, just their relentless uh, ability to push forward, build this amazing team that fast uh, to make things happen. So I know you're going to learn a lot from them today. Garrett, Sean, welcome to the show. I, I was uh, reading your bio and a little bit about you all. Such interesting backgrounds. And I think you all should share a little more about with the listeners, maybe you know how some unique skill sets maybe that you have that, uh, that you've learned from your background. Share us how, with us how you gain those skill sets uh, and then maybe how they've been complementary to helping you all grow and scale so fast. All right, Garrett, go ahead. All uh, right. Uh, thanks, Whitney, for having us, man. We appreciate it. Um, uh, my background, I guess my background, um, grew up out here on the West Coast, California, uh, played football my entire life, uh, played my college ball at Fresno State. After Fresno, I had a long road, I guess, to the NFL. I played in pretty much every league you could think of, whether it was football, indoor, outdoor, Canadian. Um, ended up playing in the NFL for three seasons, um, had a great time. It was a fun ride. When I left football, I um, had to get into the real world, they say, which can be challenging. You, you know, you play a sport your whole life, and then you got to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your long life. Um, I, uh, I've, I fell in love with real estate. Uh, I was probably three or four years after I retired from football, and it kind of cliche. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, started figuring out that I could really – change my wealth needle and you know how powerful real estate investing was i wish i would have known about it while i was playing ball and i, and I really didn't um and yeah you know I, I got a real job uh, a w-2 job i'm a firefighter paramedic out here on the west coast um and then i guess i don't know you're talking about superpowers as far as superpowers goes um i would say for me it's uh relationship building the ability to create relationships, talk to people, brokers, partners. Um, and then another thing would be just being relentless. You know, this, uh, my, my ride in football was, was not easy and I had to learn a lot about myself. And, uh, I think this business in real estate is not easy as well. And, and if you're not relentless and you don't stick with it, um, it'll punch you in the face a bunch of times and you got to know how to take those punches and keep moving forward. Go about you, Sean. Yeah, Give us a little more about, yeah. about you and, and uh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so uh, like Garrett, you know, I've got a, a W-2 uh, job as well. So 17 year, 17 and a half uh, year military veteran. Um, a couple of years ago, wife and I started having discussions about, you know, what, what happens post-military, right? Because it's, it's not forever. You know, eventually that, that chapter of your life comes to an end and you got to do something else. So uh Got really intentional with real estate. Um, started to do a lot of education, you know, like Garrett uh, spoke about, right? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, but I've got a couple master's degrees and I really, really, really love to read and get educated. 
Um, so I, I read just about everything you could, you know, listen to a bunch of different podcasts. I, you know, still do that today. You just got that, uh, that itch for, for knowledge and, uh, you know, figured out, Hey, you know, single family is nice. Uh, but it really doesn't have the ability to scale and get to where I need to be, uh, you know, once I retire to really transition uh, and, and be where we want to be as far as uh, from a financial standpoint. Um, so uh, I joined a mastermind group and I met Garrett and, uh, you know, like Garrett, I, I've grown up in an environment where the team is essential, right? So the military you know, if you if you want to achieve success, if you want to achieve excellence, you don't do that alone. You do that with a team, right? It's kind of like that uh, the African proverb: if you uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, uh, you know, go with others, right? So, um, with his NFL background, with his you know um, service background as well, it was it was a perfect match. Our values match. Uh, we're both very family oriented. I love to help other people, you know, like me, he's got that, that growth mindset and that thirst for knowledge. Um, so we're, we're always learning, always growing. And, uh, you know, we got that, that grit. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's, I mean, I talk about it in my, in my own story often, just military background, law enforcement background, uh, federal agent, all those things, right? Uh, none of those things are easy to accomplish. Uh, and I just think that shares a lot about people's character, you know, and and I appreciate, you know, you all uh, and your service, uh, you know, in the military and also as a first responder. I mean, it just uh, speaks a lot about who you are, your, your just, uh, desire to serve others. Uh, I'm grateful, you know, for your service. But also I just often see uh, like common uh, traits right amongst uh, whether it's military or even professional athletes right even even before uh, you know Garrett being a first responder like there's so many things there that uh, just the mindset right that you have to be relentless you know as Garrett talked about I mean if you're going to be a professional athlete or, or whether you're going to go in combat I mean, either way uh, I would I would say even in, in playing football it's it's almost like combat to some degree but uh, but it's it's just such a mindset there that. Uh, it's hard to gain, right? Uh, outside of some type of situation like that or learning experience, right? Being put in those situations where, hey, man, like you either, you have to step up or you just don't, right? Um, and, 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 you know, it's, it's interesting guys and gals who have been in those situations and you've been made to uh, be relentless. You've been made to really uh, show yourself what you're made out of, right? And then things in the future just are, are, you see things differently. I think, uh, you know, uh, coming from those backgrounds, uh, no doubt about it. So it's interesting to see that. Tell me a little bit about, I know you all have scaled and you know, you've grown a team. You, like you said, uh, Sean, you both come from situations where, Hey, the, the team is so crucial, no doubt about it. Uh, and in this, in this business, uh, really in almost any business, but especially in syndication business, commercial real estate, yeah, I mean it's a team sport, uh, and you all have grown a team. You've you come from backgrounds where you know how to work with teams. Uh, tell us a, a little bit about maybe your um, abilities that are, uh, you know, that work well together. You know, or uh, and then maybe uh, you know how you started to scale your team. Things you needed, you saw, uh, you know, in your business. Hey, we need to find somebody to do this or to do this. Some of your first hires, or and and how you all work well together. Here, do you want to take a stab at this one? Sure, yeah. All right. So <laughs> I guess I'll tell you, like, Sean and I met right before COVID. So now we can say, you know, everything's like pre-COVID, post-COVID as of lately. So mm -hmm. um, right before COVID, we met, we started talking about, hey, you know, we want to scale this thing. We want to, you know, create a syndication company where we can raise money with investors and buy these, you know, awesome commercial assets. Um, what we realized is that we needed a platform. So we needed a we needed a web page. Uh, we needed all the background, the CRM. I will tell you that it is not my world at all. And I think it really wasn't Sean's world either. We kind of struggled at the beginning, um, figuring out, you know, we would listen to podcasts or we'd, you know, ask in our network, what are you guys using? Um, so we kind of used COVID as a time, whether, uh, at least for us, there wasn't a lot of deal flow. Everything kind of shut down for six months. Um, we used that time to create the, you know, the brand, the website, the, the background, everything that you see that's rise now. Um, we had definitely had some growing pains. We went through a couple different web designers. Uh, it was not easy and not fun, but just like anything that's worth getting, it's never easy or fun. Um, then as we 
you know, started, I guess, uh, talking to people in our network, we said, well, God, man, this guy's awesome. You know, I feel like he could add something to the team. So we kind of started putting some pieces together. Um, one of our partners is super analytical, Jeff. He's like our, our numbers guy. I mean, I, I was, I do some of the underwriting as well. So I've become a numbers guy, um, but he is like next level numbers guy. Um, so you bring him in, we kind of run things by each other. We have a little different style when it comes to underwriting, but we typically come up with very similar values. How did you um, find him? Uh, through networks, just through a friend of a friend. They said, Hey, I think you should meet this guy. He loves um, investing in real estate himself. He had done a bunch of deals prior to us. Um, and then it was just a conversation, got on a call like this. And it, like Sean was talking about, it's, it's typically, at least with our experience so far in partnerships, people are the most important part of it. There can be as many deals and as much money out there that you want to go find. But if the right people aren't there, it does not matter. The people have to be the first decision when it comes to partnerships. Um, so he was kind of a piece. Um, we have a CPA on our team um, and he specializes in real estate. Uh, so it's great to have somebody that he can do in-house cost segregations. Um, he does all of our tax returns and he loves real estate as well. And he's, he's a good person. All of us are, again, more importantly, more family oriented. Everything is about our kids and our futures and our legacy. Um, and then who else am I missing, Sean? I know there's more out there. Oh, I'll talk about Matt. Yeah. Matt and Brent, go ahead. Yeah, you can finish this up. Yeah. So uh, like uh, Garrett was saying, you know, we were doing a lot of networking. We were taking uh, the opportunity with COVID, right? A lot of people uh, focus on the downside, but we looked at it as an opportunity to grow uh, and grow this business uh, that we decided to create and, and rise. And, and so we're networking and, and found some other partners, uh, uh, Matt Chimbo out of uh, out of Atlanta. That's that's one of our, our major markets there that that we invest in uh, here in Georgia. Um, uh, and he is a rock star. Uh, he handles a lot of the operations, uh, construction management, and all of that sort of stuff. I mean, he is like he's like a bulldog. You know, it's kind of the best example. No pun intended, uh, Garrett, because I, I think that was a mascot of the college you played at. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we also got. Uh, you know, one of our, our younger partners, but has been extremely, extremely successful in, in other business ventures, um, Brent Bardalis. And he now knows a lot of our IT, uh, a lot of our website, a lot of our CRM, a lot of, a lot of things that Garrett and I were struggling with. Um, and he handles that and he does it with ease, you know, which, which is a huge, huge benefit for us that we can focus on, you know, some of the other things that we're, we're better at, some of our superpowers or strengths, if you will. So, um, I cannot, I cannot emphasize enough the value of the team. You know, a lot of times I say, uh, you know, we talk about the law of uh, compounding interest and, and those types of things, but you know, the, the wrong team compounds and the right team, I'm uh, sorry, the, the wrong team confounds and the right team compounds and they can have a huge compounding effect on your ability to succeed in this business. Interesting. Uh, it's interesting. Like you all met, uh, you know, just before COVID, but you already have, I mean, a numerous, numerous team members that have like specific skill sets. And like you named about four different ones there. Uh, you know, what one uh, really focused on underwriting one as a CPA. So you have a CPA on your team as well. That's very mm -hmm. unique for somebody, that, you know, that's, you know, you all didn't even meet that long ago, but you already have these team members in place. Somebody has the operational kind of experience or somebody that's working in that directly anyway, and IT, somebody that's IT and tech focused or, or uh, you know, has those abilities in a big way. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty solid team already, right? Uh, lots of skill sets there that, that are, uh, that are great, right. To have on the team. Most will have for many, many years. Uh, and so I was even thinking like, yeah, you know, you mentioned like underwriter was through a network. How did you meet the CPA and the other two guys? A lot of it was through, through network and uh, you know, some of our coaches and uh, mentors that we have at a group, you know, kind of made connections and, um, saw gaps and, uh, you know, we, we noticed that there were areas that, you know, we, we couldn't take care of by ourselves that we needed, you know, some sort of expertise and then just reaching out to people. I mean, real estate is a relationship business, right? I mean, whether it's the brokers, whether it's through networking, sure. I mean, even, even our relationship, right. It, it is through networking it is through, you know, establishing uh, that relationship. So, 
Um, we're on calls every day, meeting new people. And I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, I, not to get too philanthropic, but or uh, philosophical on you, you know, life is about two things, really. It's about relationships and experience, right? <clears throat> so it's about the experience uh, that you have throughout life and those relationships that you, you bring along the way and or you make along the way. And, and for us, you know, if we're successful, we want to bring as many people on that ride as possible. And we can only do that by establishing relationships, finding people who share the same values of us that want to be part of the team at Rise. You know, we talked about just our partners, but we really firmly believe that, you know, the investors are part of our team, part of our family as well. And we want to bring them on for the ride. No, that's awesome. Well, uh, tell me, do, uh, do all the team members still have W-2s or anybody full-time yet? Uh, yeah. So I would say 90% of us have W-2s and one of our guys, Jeff, uh, I'm pretty sure he just kind of, we had the conversation a day and he said, Hey, I'm at the point now where I really don't have to work anymore. Um, he's been doing real estate for probably a decade now. Um, so he's kind of at where we all want to be, um, which is, you know, having enough of that, that passive income or, um, income from real estate to where you could, stop working if you don't want to now. Yeah. So what he was talking about for me is, you know, I'm nearly 18 years now in the military and with my passive investments, I've, I've reached a point of, you know, what they call financial freedom or financial independence um, you know, and really kind of superseded, superseded that. So um, it's really just now for my specific situation. And it's an agreement that I made with my, my spouse and my family is, you know, when it, when it stops being fun, you know, we'll, we'll retire from the military and then we'll, we'll start doing this full time. The other part of that too is Rise is a, you know, it's a newly developed. So we, we just formed in August of 2020 and uh, just recently took down our first deal in March, right outside side of Atlanta. And uh, so with the, the size of the business right now, it doesn't require a, a you know, multiple full-time employees that we do have teams uh, built out to uh, find opportunities such as, you know, direct seller campaigns and, and those types of things. So I just think it's neat for the, like the listeners to hear, Hey, we can build a team like this of very qualified people, even while almost all of them have full-time jobs. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we can still make this happen, uh, you know, by building that team and, and everybody can still have other W-2s that they're still working. Tell me a little bit about your uh, just how do you all communicate? What are some maybe some operational things that maybe the listener myself needs to know about that? What makes you all kind of tick and work together, you know, well, say on a day to day or weekly basis? You know, one of the one of the big things with us is that we make sure you have to you have to communicate, right? So uh, you have to set up a process. If you're going to have a, a W two job, you have to block time. You have to uh, make sure there's systems in place to understand what everybody's roles and responsibilities are. So up front, we clearly define what everybody's lanes were. So we kind of talked about everybody's superpowers and those types of things. Um, we're like, okay, well, this is, this is your lane. Are you, are you comfortable, you know, doing these things? Then we use uh, a system called Asana. And I'm sure some of your listeners, most of your listeners, and I, I see you shake your head uh, up and down. I know what Asana is. It's a way for us to communicate. It's a way for us to make sure we stay on task. Um, we use it both for the business in general, um, but also for the property specific uh, tasks. Additionally, we have uh, weekly meetings, uh, Zoom meetings. So it's always good to see people, you know, face to face. But COVID is really hard to, to get together, uh, right? But with technology, uh, Zoom and those types of things, it makes it a lot easier for us to, you know, to get together and meet and discuss and stay on task. Is there a, I mean, like communication is such a big component, right? Of any relationship or team or, I mean, whether it's family, you know, marriage or, or whether it's your partnership, right? Uh, you know, communication is such a, an important, vital thing that, that's happening. Military, football, man, you got to be communicating, right? Uh, you have yeah. to be, it doesn't matter. Uh, and so, you know, tell me a little bit about, is there a, is there like a, 
a weekly huddle or is there a, uh, you know, maybe a format that you could share? Hey, we've got to hit these key things or I've got to know, you know, Garrett, these are the things you bring to this meeting or Sean, this is what you bring or the CPA or whatever. Is there like a, you know, a method that you all have found to work well for the communication piece uh, with a team like this? Uh, you know, uh, from the, your backgrounds, you know, I imagine you have a lot of experience there, but what has worked well, you know, with your real estate team? Uh, at, so I pulled over some of my experience from the military. Uh, if you talk to anybody in the military, they'll tell you we are uh, PowerPoint warriors. So we <laughs> we live and die by, by PowerPoint and by briefing. Um, but we're also uh, very much creatures of habit. And so, you know, we have our weekly meetings. We have slides that everybody's responsible to update to kind of keep the rest of the group um, aware of what's going on. So big picture you know, I oversee the operations of the business itself. So a lot of times I have that global essay, but say something happens to me now, Garrett, now one of the other partners, right. Can kind of pick up that baton because there's, you know, there's history there that they can, they can see, they can see what everyone else is doing. Uh, right. Cause I mean, let's face it, life happens, right. Maybe I need to go on a family vacay or something, you know, something happens to uh, one of my family members or myself. And, uh, you know, someone needs to pick up the ball and continue moving it down the field. So we've got the, the systems kind of set up. So we have a, a shared briefing, right, that we update uh, every, every week. And I'll send out our little reminder email once a week with the link to the brief. Uh, and each one of the partners puts in their pieces. And then, you know, if something's going on in their life and they can't make it to the, the meeting, you know, they'll just send me a note, send me the, the cliff notes. And then, you know, I can, I can kind of run with it. Yeah, I'll I'll add to that. I mean, it's good to have a um, a commander running our our business operations because Sean keeps us all paddling in the same direction, which is amazing. I know it's one of my weaknesses is or, organizing that sort of thing. The, the one the other thing I want to add to communication is that you know texting and emailing is great. You can get a lot of stuff done that way, but many times you need to pick up the phone and you need to talk. You know, one on one on a phone call we kind of sometimes get away from that uh, in this generation, especially some of our millennials. Um, and you can't always communicate what you want to communicate through text or email, or sometimes what you're trying to communicate comes off a certain way. And that also isn't good in the situation. So one thing I've learned personally is there are some things that need to, you got to pick up the phone and just make the call. Um, yeah. They need to be communicated one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I find, you know, if you just, if you prefer one another of yourself and you just assume the best, like that goes a long way, you know, like you, you see that text message and maybe it, man, it just seems kind of off, right? You know, it, it probably, it may not be what you think, you know, like, and like uh, Garrett said, yeah, pick the phone up and hey, let's talk about this. What, what's going on here? Uh, and so, uh, no, that that's, that's, yeah, if we could just all do that, we'd be so much better off. But well, guys, a, a few final questions, you know, how do you all prepare for a downturn? You know, you're looking at deals, obviously we just went through COVID. You know, how do you all moving forward being prepared for some kind of downturn? Yeah, this is this is Garrett Slade for sure. Uh, yeah, he could talk uh, about our underwriting. <laughs> um, you know, people talk about conservative underwriting, you know, and what is that and what does that look like nowadays? I will tell you, well, I'll tell you we're not a volume business. So we will do quality deals over quantity all day long. We're we're not gonna get ourselves into a hundred unit deal to maybe make a a fee, you know, like a uh, upfront fee, because that's what we need, because we all have side gigs that make us money. Um, very stringent underwriting. It goes through me, it goes through Jeff, it goes through me again, and it goes through Jeff again. Um, I mean, we we typically, we do a lot of the rule of thumbs what, as far as cap rates go, looking into a market, looking ahead. Um, we never assume really cap rate compression, even in some of these really strong markets. Um, we would rather feel 100%, 99.9% on a deal before we go into it instead of, you know, having any doubt in our mind, especially where we're at in the market today. I mean, I'm sure you see the same thing when people are paying crazy amounts of money for specifically multifamily because it's a strong asset class. It's recession resistant. People saw even through COVID and, and maybe we're still going to see some of that pain coming here um, soon, but you know, but everything's held up pretty strong. So to answer that question, you know, conservative underwriting, multiple checkpoints, not just, 
you know, one guy check and we have, and then, and besides me and Jeff, we get everybody else's opinion too. Hey, what do you think about the market? You know, especially our boots on the ground. Hey, go drive this for us. So we know we're not in some war zone. Um, I'd say multiple points, multiple checklists that we check off before we even really get under contract. I mean, we're, you know, again, quality, we, we want to do quality deals. We want to feel comfortable. We would rather not do a deal in, instead of doing a deal that's maybe thin or could get us in trouble down the road. For sure. Uh, do you all have any, any thoughts uh, or anything you would share about your predictions on the real estate market over the next six to 12 months? Go for it, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just sent it out. Uh, I just sent out a, an email to the group. Uh, so I read a ton. Um, and I'm, I'm a huge, uh, like macroeconomics, uh, nerd, if you want to call it that. And, um, ha- to, to predict the future would be tough. Um, I- inflation scares me, you know, just, just a little bit, but, um, being in this, you know, real estate niche with potential inflation on the horizon, uh, is not as bad. Uh, what does kind of give me maybe a little concern is the potential for, increase in interest rates. I do think that's going to happen. Um, I, I believe uh, that I think that the Fed's actually meeting today um, and, and looking at the inflation numbers. Um, so they they will probably decide to to raise the interest rates here in the next you know six to nine to 12 months. Uh, so I, I do think we will we'll see that happening. Um, and the impact that has on on the real estate market is is to be seen, you know, the real estate market is in a really crazy place, whether you're in single family, multifamily, you know, whatever niche you're in, it's, it's pretty wild. And then throw in um, some of the construction supply costs, you know, with lumber and steel and those types of things. And you've got kind of this perfect storm. Um, so what, what's going to come out on the other end is uh, who, who knows? Yeah, we'll see I would just say we're being very cautious when we underwrite our deals right now. I mean, definitely very, very cautious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Interest rates. You better be planning on it, whether you believe it's going to or not. You better have a plan for interest rates. Going oh, yeah. Up. And it will affect every business. It doesn't even, not even, I mean, even outside of real estate. Unfortunately, most businesses work off debt, right? And getting loans mm-hmm. and they count on those things. So uh, it's definitely will affect our, our entire country in many ways or all businesses. But but uh, what about, you know, from your all's backgrounds, I'd love to hear just some like daily habits or routines that you have that you are disciplined about that have helped you achieve success. Well, my, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I've got a, a daily routine. I am up at five o'clock every morning and uh uh, I'm a believer in a lot of the miracle morning. So, you know, mental, physical, spiritual, uh, I, I get up, you know, drink a glass of water, brush my teeth, uh, meditate for a little bit and then take care of the physical part. So, uh, work out religiously every morning, uh, and just like Garrett does. Um, and then I'll, I'll do reading and, and then I block time to work on stuff for rise, uh, before my children rise out of bed. Uh, So I try to get a lot of that stuff done because uh, I believe in spending time with, with family and, and, you know, your loved ones as well. So I got to block time to, to spend with them and enjoy it while, uh, you know, while the young ones are still around. I I would ditto what Sean just said. I wake up at in the fives every day. Um, I typically get my rise work done in the morning before my kids rise. Uh, (laughs) So we both have, I've got three children, Sean's got a couple. So um, right now in California time, um, everybody's asleep in my house. So this is a time for me to get this kind of work done. Um, I think uh, the physical portion, the health portion is a huge part of it, at least for me. Um, If I'm not getting my workouts in, I'm miserable. So it's kind of a non-negotiable. It's always been that way, you know, for my whole football career. Um, So you got to get the workouts done. And then, I think consistency is huge that it's that grit, that relentlessness. I had so many times in this business that's happening today where I'm like, man, we're never going to find a deal, but he's overpaying for deals. And you just, every morning you go back to drawing board and you go, okay, what, what can we do today to try to get a deal done? How can we get creative? It's also good to have like-minded individuals surrounding yourself. You know, your, your network is your net worth. Having Sean to lean on going, Sean, man, I'm, I'm having a bad day today, man. Help me out. And then Sean goes, you know, he gives me some words of wisdom and 
helps me snap out of it a little bit. Um, so to have people around you to keep you moving in the same direction is also super important. What's your Wait, best source? Could, or, go ahead, Sean. If I could piggyback on that real quick and, and give maybe a little word of advice to listeners out there, just understand all things are difficult before they're easy, right? But the key is you need to set goals, persevere, and understand the process. And really to achieve goals, and we talked about this, you need to communicate, plan, persevere, and stay focused. And your team can help you do that, right? Now, going back to what I said before, the right team will compound. They'll have a compounding effect on you. And I would say one of my super strengths is the ability to inspire and motivate, guide, and lead you know, our team in the direction because that happens a lot. And, you know, sometimes I need that stuff too. And my, my biggest, uh, my biggest teammate, right. Is, is my spouse. Um, but you know, what I'm not talking to her, I'm usually talking to Garrett and, and he does the same thing. So it's that kind of law of reciprocity, right. Um, when, when he's down, he picks me up, but when, when I'm down, he picks me up as well. So. No, I appreciate you adding that, Sean. No doubt about it. That's part of a partnership, right? Uh, you know, when my business partner and I started our partnership, we started getting to know one another. We went into it knowing it was like a marriage, and and really yeah. treated it that way. Lots of due diligence on one another, and I mean, just took a lot of time, right? I mean, to get to know each other and each yeah. other's spouses. I even I even flew back to his house and stayed for like four or five days with he and his family just to get to know them. You know, before we really right. said, "Hey, yeah. we're going to do this." So, uh, it's uh, no, I appreciate you elaborating on that. I think also it's interesting. Uh, this, you know, so often, you know, I ask that question and most of the time, I won't say all the time, but majority of the time, anyway, people that are successful entrepreneurs are early risers. And I hear people often say, oh, I'm not an early riser. I stay up late working. And yes, that works for some. Yes, you can still make it happen. But I tell you what, more times than not, people are, that are successful entrepreneurs are up early, you know, making it happen mm-hmm. in the morning or just have that very structured morning routine. I hear it time and time again. That's also my story, very similar to, to you all, you know, both of you up at five and very, you know, set things that I, I like to get done every morning. And, uh, and over time, like you said, there's that consistency, right? That one morning doesn't seem like you're doing a whole lot, but man, you over a month and six months, all of a sudden a year goes by, you've moved the needle a whole lot. Especially like Sean, if you're reading a ton, like you said, you've educated yourself in many ways. Uh, you know, tell us what what's kind of the reading routine. You said you read a ton. When do you read? How do you know what you want to read? What's been the most you know best use of reading time? So I, I block time uh, throughout the day, and so I have multiple sources of of information, whether it's real estate, whether it's uh, economics, uh, whether it's psychology, uh, whether it's self help, you know, all that. So. Uh, in the morning before I start doing rides, I'll, I'll dedicate 10 to 15 minutes to see what's going on uh, in the commercial space. Anything of relevance uh, for today, anything that could potentially impact, you know, our properties. So also do some market research as well uh, in, in the markets that we're in. And and the, really the easy, easiest way to do this is, you know, subscribe to, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, websites that focus strictly on, the niche, the real estate niche that you're focused on, or the area that you're invested in, and they'll send you a lot of that, and they'll send. Do you, you have a Do you have one you that. could recommend that that helps you with that? Uh, so Globe Street for yeah. um, uh, that, that's a really good one uh, that that I use for for multifamily, and actually, uh, I believe you can select retail and uh, some of the other like self stores, some of the other niches. And they they pull from all different areas. Wall Street Journal has a, a commercial uh, commercial niche as well that they'll they'll send you, I believe, uh, weekly. Um, and then I subscribe to a couple of different newspapers as well to kind of you know um, cer- complete the circle. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, what's your all's best source for meeting new investors right now? Good question, Sean. To- so our, our, I would say our best source is, is really our, our network and, and getting ourselves out there on um, social media um, and word of mouth. So I handle a lot of the investor calls and I think that's why Garrett was kind of deferred to me. And one of the first questions I ask is, hey, so how'd you hear about us? You know, because uh, that way we can kind of figure out what's working and what's not. 
you know, as far as uh, marketing and getting ourselves out there. Um, so one of the things we're real intentional with is doing, you know, being consistent with our rise accounts on social media, putting out content. Um, so I do a lot of the, the writing of our articles. We try to put out at least once a month, a newsletter out to our investors and our CRM. And then weekly we'll put out whether it's inspirational quotes regarding real estate or, um, you know, just fun facts uh, for potential investors to know. And then we also have a, a free passive investor guide that, you know, we put together uh, on, on our website and you know, give that out as well. What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if we can beat this one enough, but uh, it, it really <laughs> is the team. Yeah, it's, it's the team. Um, yeah. You know, whether it's lifting each other up, you know, or rising each other up or, uh, um, you know, whether it's filling the gaps and, and playing off each other's strengths, you know, to to achieve a goal and, and go in the right direction. So for sure, it's, it's the right team and the right network. The, the, the brand name Rise came from the old adage, rising tide lifts all boats. So we all lift each other up together. And that's us in our team and as well as our investors. We all move the needle together. And how do you all like to give back? So we talked about uh, the educational aspect. So really, I really enjoy talking to people and finding ways that we can help them grow, whether it's through, you know, giving them knowledge with, you know, expecting nothing in return or whether it's just, you know, having someone to bounce some ideas off of potentially joint venture with um, to help them grow if they're, they're brand new real estate investors, but also, uh, you know, real estate's about solving problems. It's about making things better, at least in, in our line of work. So we're, we're a value add group. We go in and we want to improve the property, make it better for the tenants, make it better for the community, and then give back to that community. So we look for, you know, charities and, and those types of things to give back. And that's, that's one of our big goals this year. Now that we've taken down a property is, okay, we want to give back, uh, to the community. So we want to make enough money to where we can contribute back to the community that we're serving, you know, cause like I said, Garrett and I come from a, a huge background of service, whether it's to our community, whether it's to our country, um, we really like to give back. Awesome. Of, Go ahead. Yeah. No, I'll say one of our big goals that we talked about, again, we, we'd like to be able to give away at least 1% of our acquisition fees to charity. So that's important for us. We don't live on these acquisition fees. Um, they help keep the lights on, they help keep the business running, but we'd like to give a big portion of that away. Awesome. Well, guys, I'm grateful for your time and thank you again for just for your service. Uh, we're military or first responder. I mean, it's uh, grateful for our guys and gals that serve in that way. I, I've been in those, both of those shoes myself. Uh, and, and I love that, uh, both of them while I was doing it. Uh, but, uh, anyway, thank you again. I appreciate your time and giving back to us today, sharing about really importance of your team, some different team members you all have added very quickly. Uh, you know, it's very few teams uh, grow with the expertise. I think that fast, you know, that you all have and, I just appreciate you all sharing uh, some of you know, your importance of communication and, and how you all just work together and have gone fast, really, uh, very well. Uh, tell the listeners, though, how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yeah, uh, so thanks again, Wendy, for having us on. Uh, you can reach out or you can check out our website, www.rise, R-I-Z-E, uh, equity.com. On there, we've got a free passive investor guide. Just go to the same uh, same website, put in backslash passive, and you can get the uh, free passive investor guide. Also, you can reach out to us at our email, uh, info at riseequity.com. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.